when that team was announced in 2019 what went on in your head like you immediately let go no 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 it it's it emotionally for a very long time that team management they thought just because i was calm quiet maybe i was not too confident that some stupid logic there's a lot of cricket fans and i think even uv has said this that you should have been given more chances for india everybody's story is going to be different but i'm happy that never asked anybody for any favors it hurt me that you went to csk i'm a mumbai indians fan <laughs> see you go to our biggest rivals firstly there was a lot of dependability associated with you a lot of teams don't have any idea of how to build a team so they say a player is finished player is that they keep changing players like i think everyone knows which franchises these are these days uh, the way they sit and talk in the commentary box in the media rooms i don't think they talk a lot of sense i don't think any team has played better than us in this world cup little disappointed that we didn't win the finals because there will be those fans you know who will point fingers and blame and kind of throw negativity but i think most indian fans are actually very proud of our team yeah so it's just unfortunate it's an epic cricket themed podcast with one of the streets won't forget cricketers ambati raidu if you've grown up and watched this man play cricket you know exactly what he brought to a cricket team i sincerely hope that this particular podcast spreads in all sorts of cricket circles all over the world ideally that's why we did it in english so please sit back enjoy the episode it is slightly nerdy but i promise you by the end of it you'll gain a lot of insight about cricket in general and what it's like being a cricketer absolutely love doing these sports themed podcasts and i hope that you love listening to them as much as i love creating them this is amati raidu on trs you're welcome to trs amvati raidu bhai thank how, you how are you i'm good how are you very good great having a cricket conversation today uh yeah. love sitting in front of you likewise how, how are you feeling i am good little disappointed that we didn't win the finals but yeah i'm good okay uh is a cricket fan alive very much so in every cricketer's heart also yeah of course i mean end of the day we are all cricket fans as well as cricketers so yeah, we understand what goes on what goes on bro what goes on in terms of you know emotion for the game like when you sit out and even watch cricket so you are always a spectator even though you keep analyzing stuff as a cricketer but you are always a fan inside okay do you want to tell me how your viewpoint changes once you actually become a professional cricketer and you're viewing a game how does your viewpoint change versus when you were a fan and when you didn't play play professionally i mean it changes because you keep analyzing you look at the conditions you look at what the bowler is trying to do or the batsman is trying to do so you have your analysis based on you know if he has done something right or wrong or why he has done something or why he hasn't done something so i mean it all makes sense but end of the day sport being a sport you can never analyze it enough end of the day you just hope that we do well yeah what do you mean you can't analyze it enough matlab kya matlab matlab you can never get it uh, spot on okay in terms of analysis there's always that element of uh, you know surprise in a sport okay yeah. like you can't exactly say that this went wrong or that went yeah, wrong or this yeah. went right that's what you're trying to say i mean exactly okay but you can always come close i tweeted actually that this is the generation z version of what we went through in 2003 Do <laughs> you remember that 2003 yeah, pain yeah, yeah. of the Ricky Ponting team? Gen Z has understood that pain now. Uh, fair to say? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, we were actually in the West Indies when we were watching. We were in the India A side, but we were watching our main team, uh, you know, play the 2003 World Cup. They did so well, but in the end, I thought I thought we would do the opposite to Australia this time. Unfortunately, yeah. we couldn't. Which one do you think hurts us more as fans, two thousand three or twenty twenty three? I think both, but uh, this time I think we had a much stronger side. That point, uh, I think Australia were much stronger than us. But this time, definitely we were a stronger side. Yeah, yeah, 
this is probably the strongest indian side that i can remember in my life of watching yeah. cricket and i have a friend of mine zakir khan he also said the same thing that he's never seen an indian side dominate so much exactly right do you agree as a professional cricketer or am i saying something wrong no 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 of course we had i think sometimes no things happen like that but uh, i feel this is the best indian side i've seen in i've seen play in a world cup yeah 100% Have you seen a better Indian side than this in general? But yeah, of course, two thousand eleven was a better Indian side in general because of the skill factor and the experience and everything. But this side, I think, played the best in all the World Cups that I have seen. Yeah, um, you know, there's something called theory of negative biases, which means if someone says something negative about you, you'll always remember that, but you won't remember the ten positive things that are said about you by ten yeah. different people. That's just how human brains work. So I feel a lot of our starting eleven or the squad that played the twenty twenty three World Cup. I'm sure they are staying away from social media right now because there will be those fans, you know, who will point fingers and blame and kind of throw negativity. But I think most Indian fans, like ninety nine percent, are actually very proud of our team. Yeah. Of just how they played. I think I think they should be proud of the team. The way they have played was tremendous. I I don't think I have seen any team play like that. So. and it's just unfortunate that we couldn't pull it off in the finals somehow i think even the wicket was kind of very very slow lethargic for a final i don't know whose idea was it i think i think even a normal surface would have done because we were we were way more stronger than the australian side we didn't have to do all that in the final it, it was just supposed to be a good cricketing wicket which yeah. unfortunately wasn't you know all the fans who watch cricket understand how much the pitch and the conditions can affect a game and we hear the analysis on the pitch and the conditions but actually when you're batting what changes on a slow pitch like that or what changes in those kind of conditions can you explain it from your like if i'm asking you as a younger brother ki bhaiya samjhaiye what what actually changes when you're starting to bat on a slow pitch like that so the only dilemma is if the pitch stays the same throughout the game like the entire 100 overs then it's not a problem then you can play according to the conditions but when you know or have a sense that dew might set in or you know pitch might get flatter later on so you'll have to force yourself to you know play that many more shots just to get the run rate up to par for the second innings so that is where all the mistakes happen that was a surface where it was not the same in the first 50 and the next 50 so i think uh, for a world cup finals i definitely feel it should have been a much better wicket yeah does the indian team have a say in the wickets or not just the indian team but say if a tournament is happening in a country say england so will the english team have a say in like how the pitch should be i uh, i don't think they have a say but i think somehow people think that they are helping the indian side by preparing a wicket like that shouldn't they <laughs> <laughs> like i would help if i was in charge of that stadium but that's the problem see you know we got stuck on a wicket that was so slow unfortunately i don't think that should happen it should be a good cricketing wicket and we have the skill and we have the strength in our side to beat any side So a good cricketing wicket is something that stays constant throughout hundred overs. Yeah, that should. I mean, in a limited overs game, that's an ideal scenario. Okay. Yeah, toss shouldn't matter that much. So what was the logic behind someone saying, "Nay, final ke liye na let's let's make it a slow wicket"? Yeah, I don't know if somebody has thought about it or <laughs> done it on purpose, but if they would they would have done it on purpose, it's stupidity. Yeah. I don't know who would have done it. <laughs> I don't think they would have done it, but. No. I I blame America, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. Uh, now it is geopolitically everyone blames uh, America. Uh, coming back to cricket, um, could you see anything different as a former professional? Could you see anything different when the side was playing the final versus playing all the other games of the World Cup? Was there a different mindset, or was the mindset the same? Not, not really. I think. Uh... Rohit started off the same. All the all the batsmen started off the same. Even I think the Australians also came with a very good plan by not giving room to Indians. They were bowling more into their bodies and had had a leg side field and stuff. So even they came prepared. But uh, I don't think our approach has changed. It's just because of the conditions that we had to bat a little different. 
so it was just the situation and the yeah. pitch basically yeah that's the situation in the pitch and you know somehow we lost wickets at a crucial stage where we should not have even that uh, maybe we could have maybe gotten 30 40 more runs 280 would have been a very very good fight see you know bro we have viewers from ahmedabad and i want them to find the pitch curator <laughs> <and> <laughs> go and just ask him politely what are you thinking um but it, it was just the pitch according to you yeah i think it's just the conditions what is the mindset now like of the players two days three days after i'm sure you guys talk to each other generally i'm not saying that i'm not asking yeah. about inside information or anything i'm just saying as a professional cricketer when there is a loss like this where the country is a little bit dejected how do the starting 11 or the whole squad the 15 person squad how do they feel definitely it's a big dampener but uh, i think they'll move on eventually because they'll take a lot of pride in how they have played throughout so at the end of the day you know this is the time that everybody should you know keep backing them i'm sure uh, there's another uh, t20 world cup around the corner so we should keep this momentum going and i think the whole country should come forward in support of our team the way they have played and i'm i'm very sure that you know we'll start winning tournaments sooner than later yeah uh why do you say that because the brand of cricket that we are playing has changed so we're starting to dominate sides and we're starting to play well in play well in every condition so i think it's a great sign and uh, especially our bowling of the way we have bowled in this tournament is tremendous so, yeah i'm sure uh, you know things will get better from now on okay um ambati raidu you know how we remember you as a fan we remember your consistency a lot like that is what i was discussing with natiket also who's sitting here that what do you remember about ambati raidu and he said the same word as me so like, yeah just very consistent like you were very dependable throughout your career you look at your career like that only like that was your highlight yeah my highlight was uh, you know i had to play through different numbers different conditions i mean it was like i would remember myself as being very flexible in a team environment i would i would you know bat open as well as bat in the middle order bat lower middle order so you know that is one area where uh, i thought you know i take a lot of pride you know in doing doing that for the team i i i would actually cherish that a lot in my career out and out team team guy yeah uh, I mean, why do we play a team sport to win so it's all about contributing you know, these uh, you know as you say all the stats have come for media you know because media had to talk about something commentators had to talk about something but in a team environment it's all about the team so it's about winning that particular match even a guy sometimes who scores one boundary is equally important to a guy who has scored a 100 up top so it is you know the team environment the team culture the team setup understands that but because of so much of media so much of you know everything frills around the game all these things have come out and people concentrated more on that but in a good team setup everything is valued yeah um speaking about good team setups it hurt me that you went to csk i'm a mumbai indians <laughs> fan like it actually hurt us to see you go to our biggest rivals firstly and secondly we knew what we were losing when we were losing you you know like every mumbai indians fan will say that like there was a lot of dependability associated with you like if you were coming out to bat we knew Do the game is at least safe while you're there. Uh, did you feel bad leaving Mumbai Indians? Yeah, of course. Played eight years for them. I started my IPL career with Mumbai. It was a great journey. We have, you know, we have won three IPLs, two Champions League. So we have had great times. And uh, going to CSK was, I would say, even more special. <laughs> <laughs> that's painful. <laughs> <laughs> I understand what you're saying, but that's been both you and Bhaji went together. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was, was so weird for us to see that. Yeah. And going there and winning a title in the first year was, you know, it was like it was like great. To be very a, honest. So I don't like hearing that. <laughs> it's painful, but but I'm happy for you. But it's still painful. Uh, what does it feel like when you wear a new jersey? 
you know in IPL because I'm sure some of your heart and emotion is connected to your old franchise yeah. which is what a lot of fans don't like about IPL you know that why should the reshuffle happen there should be a new system yes. <laughs> we want to see our boys playing for our clubs but uh, I don't know how you guys look at that no oh, I mean it was it was very weird and moreover our first game my first game for CSK was against MI wow. at Vankade so it was like uh, the previous day not the game day but the previous day it was very weird to sit in another dressing room go down put on yellow pads instead of blue and mi was practicing just two wickets away from me so it was like the whole flashback going in my head so that's what we used to do every day in and day out and uh, from then on yeah i got used to being in csk <laughs> yeah even we got used to seeing you in csk <laughs> but do players discuss this amongst each other that are yeah. why is the reshuffle happening sometimes yes because once you are so comfortable in a setup and you know you're doing your role well the team's doing well and teams also all set and suddenly all this happens and uh, as a player it feels uh, weird and it's also difficult to adjust to a new franchise but i think for the ipl it is good makes it fresh again makes it fresh and also you know teams get a lot of good players and makes it more even that's what i would say yeah you know it does make it more even but it's it still hurts the fans on some level yeah. like imagine pollard wearing a kings 11 punjab jersey tomorrow <laughs> just feels weird um or or ambati rai do wearing a csk jersey it just doesn't feel weird now because we've seen you in it <laughs> don't worry i'm playing for mi emirates <laughs> the ilt20 <laughs> yeah still but like it's like your face everything we associate yeah. with our mumbai indians blue you know up to that point and then the reshuffle just i don't know i understand that makes it even but mostly i think a lot of educated fans actually don't want reshuffles yeah uh instead i mean i've always thought please correct me if i'm wrong and if i'm saying something wrong but in american sports they have a draft system where uh, the top college players are drafted into the teams that finish at the bottom in order to kind of balance it out over time uh -huh. um so my logic was why don't they do that with some of the top domestic circuit players who have not got ipl contracts yet have a bit of a draft system and i agree with you i think uh, teams should be kept constant because that that will build a culture so every time to build a new culture around a team is very difficult so I think in a way, M I and C S K have been able to retain their core for a long time. I think that's why they have been so successful. And uh, you know, as you said, with the draft system, all other teams also can do that. Yeah. Or or even if they want to continue the auction, give a larger purse to the weaker teams. You know, something like that to just balance it out. There is nothing like weaker or stronger. It is just everybody have the same money. It's just what they do with it. A lot of teams don't have any idea of how to build a team. and a lot of people sitting in those rooms have absolutely no clue because they're not from the cricket world no even if they are from the cricket cricket world i don't think they see things the way they should be seen they are just you know they are just so immersed in numbers stats you know, all that nonsense sport is sport you know you see you see a, a sportsman for who he is or what he is about to bring what is his mindset all this is out of the window if somebody is hungry enough to you know come back after a bad season to have an impact they don't see all that they just see stats and they say a player is finished player is that nobody is ever finished mm. players always have ups and downs it's when you know a player is going through a lull that is when you back him that's what make champions team mi mi does that csk does that i think kkr even when gauti bhai was there he used to do that a lot see there you see you have you have 12 ipls amongst the teams that i have told you so there's a there's a certain culture that people i think other franchises don't understand that's what you think goes wrong for the franchises that constantly do badly yeah of course they they keep changing players like i don't know you know just keep throwing players out bring new players in somehow totally unsettles the system mm. i think everyone knows which franchises these are that we don't <laughs> you you can't no take secret. the name. you can't take, we're talking about punjab <laughs> kings delhi capitals uh, and that's it these two teams no there are many more 
Yeah. There are men, there are more. Yeah, there are more that don't do well consistently. Yeah. That have not made it to the semis in a while. Okay, yeah. but but in anyway, your logic of what you're saying is that the people who are deciding the team structure are deciding it a lot based on data. When there is a role of non tangibles in sport as well. Yeah, huge, like, huge role of non tangibles. What are the non tangibles in cricket? Non tangibles are your you know main thing is how clear you are, how relaxed you are. The main, the most important thing to have in a team environment, important thing not to have in a team environment is anxiety. A lot of teams bring that anxiety into their training, mm. into their dressing rooms, into their team meetings, into their cricket. Like everything is about high pitch. High pitch means high pitch meaning you know just to show things. Okay, <laughs> you know it is like understood. Yeah, this is a part of. Not all, but a lot of Indian lot. corporate culture. Yeah, like I think that they, they have they take a lot of tension about things. <laughs> yeah. That tension has come from Indian MBA colleges and has made its way to Indian corporate yeah, culture. Yeah. Not only Indian, they, they, all the support staff, a lot of foreigners as well. They bring in that kind of. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When when things have to be actually quite relaxed, calm. So people don't understand that as a player, he is already under tremendous pressure to perform, <laughs> to give more anxiety. to him or into his head so he is he is less clearer there is there like a dark side of the ipl in terms of are some team owners quite mean to the players because this is like sometimes you hear this on reddit gossip and all that that team I owners mean, I, have, i have been with the best of franchises <laughs> indian cricket mi and csk both the owners are brilliant they are so good to the But players truth is in the results yeah so i As you said, even I've heard gossips, but I've not been in those sites, so I don't really know. So they they have preconceived notions of how a team should be, or what will happen. They keep predicting what's going to happen in a game. They keep predicting that this bowler is going to get this guy out. That's all nonsense. I mean, what if as a batsman I decide to play a different shot to that ball? Mm. Is it in our data? No. Mm. These guys have no idea. They they just they just keep trying to predict things before. And sport is not such. You have to be there. You have to use your resources well, as a management. Whatever you have in your locker, you need to use them efficiently. That is all you can do. And go out there and compete. Mm. Yeah. Um. I want to actually ask you about this role of data in cricket. I feel there's always a role of data in industries, but you have to do a balance between data and intuition. Like yeah, there's an emotional, intuitive side also yeah, yeah, in yeah. any industry. You can't fully rely on data and then predict what to do next. Am I right in cricket terms also? But see, I'll give you a great example of uh, CSK this year with uh, Aju Ajinkya Rahane. Have you ever seen him bat like that? Mm. The way he has batted this year is tremendous. When I mean, the way he has come out, expressed himself, he always had the talent. But it is how you tap into it. See, that is that is where Dhoni Bhai, being such a great leader, he brings out the best in everybody. Like even Flem, see they have that culture of bringing out the best potential. I mean, bringing out the best potential of each and every player. So oh, you you tell me which other franchise does that apart from MI? I don't think any other franchise does that. Maybe now Gujarat Titans. Yeah, Gujarat slowly emulating CSK, CSK and, model and MI. Yeah, uh, but they have not had a bad year yet. So you'll only know once they have a. slightly bad year how they would react to it or okay so when a good franchise like mi or csk has a bad year actually what goes wrong because if the... nothing goes wrong it's just that everything in sport you can never be successful every day but how you treat your dressing room atmosphere how you keep it at a certain level where even even if you're winning or not it has to be kept constant that is where people will feel that okay i need to do more or you know they know that your effort is more valued than the result that is where both the franchises have excelled hmm okay again speaking about this intuitive emotional side of sport my reading is that dhoni bhai brings that tremendously to the locker room where yeah. he's able to see things that many other people can't see based on his own cricketing experience and his own sense of intuition exactly would you like to add anything to what i said i mean see everybody knows that he has He has brought the best 
brought out the best in so many so many players and across formats even he has brought brought out the best in many foreigners that have played for csk i think uh, he has it in him i don't even know how to express it because he is either blessed or he has cultivated it over so many years of playing the sport but many times i wonder why is he doing something which i wouldn't think is appropriate but end of the day the results show that he was right and he's right 99.9% of the times so that shows he knows what he's doing and he has done it for such a long time and so successfully and i don't think i don't think anybody in indian cricket are in a position to question his decisions now because he's been so successful um you know people on the internet also now know that while he's captain cool he has an angry side everyone knows that little bit like but it's a very hidden angry side uh have you seen that angry side or no it is not see he, he is obviously very aggressive from the inside otherwise you wouldn't be playing sport for so long and being able to compete for so long but what what makes him so good is he never gets angry when somebody is giving their 100% and somebody does a mistake he's never angry he's not angry just for the sake of it if somebody is just you know loafing around or not being serious or not doing the right thing at the right time when they're expected to or he must have told them 100 times you know this is what is expected but he is entitled to be angry then hmm? Yeah. Then he goes bhootni ke idhar dekh le. <laughs> that's what can happen. <laughs> anyway, uh that's a meme. <laughs> okay. Sorry Manish Pandey bhai. Uh, <laughs> uh but coming back to Dhoni, does he shout at foreigners sometimes? Yeah, of course. I mean, it doesn't matter. In the same side, he is our leader, so I mean, he doesn't shout just for the sake of shouting, but he will tell them subtly that this is what is expected types. Do the foreigners bring a different flavor of cricket or different mentality when it comes to cricket? Not, not really. I think it's all the same. End of the day, and it's just that how they fit into the environment and the culture. And for them, CSK is so easy to transition into, especially because of uh, Fleming, mm. who makes it so much easier for them to integrate into the system. And uh, they all, I'm sure, everybody. Every single one of them have enjoyed playing for CSK. Okay, yeah, that's what everyone says. <laughs> everyone gets too connected to CSK yeah, as a fan. You no, know, even I'm talking about the foreign players. Yeah, obviously oh. Indians are all more than happy to play for CSK. Yeah, but any player who's played for CSK, they always talk about it like it's yeah, the it's, best it's, phase. It's see, as a cricketer or even as a professional, all you can do is you can do your best, and. there they want just that they're not looking at results because the results in sport can be anything in 2020 we didn't we, i think we came 6th or 7th the same side the next year we have won the ipl hmm. there were no changes even in the dressing room there was nothing no changes everything even while we were losing the environment was the same which was little detached detached no it's the same as when we were winning okay so as in it was constant there wasn't bad or no, good energy or anything no, just same treatment no there's no bad it's the same thing got it so in sport if you give your best doesn't mean you win you win every game or every tournament as it's you have seen in the world cup yeah but we have to keep it constant okay yeah. do people at csk talk about the post dhoni bhai era uh, it's scary but uh, <laughs> <laughs> like who will be the next captain <laughs> no, i think i think ideally should be rutu hmm so let's see but post dhoni bhai era i don't think uh, it will be that much of a difference because I, i still see him with csk in some capacity holding things together so i'm sure it will remain the same like he'll maintain that core of what csk is yeah the core culture and what csk is about okay um who was the foreign teammate of yours where you gained the most from that teammate where you learned the most or who had the highest impact on you highest impact maybe you know, shane watson at csk at csk 
ओके नो रियली एंजॉय प्लेइंग विद हिम वी हैड दैट वी वर ओपनिंग द इनिंग्स व्हेन एवर वी वर टेंस्ड और वी थॉट समथिंग वाज यू नो समबडी वाज बोलिंग वेल इंस्टेड ऑफ यू नो टॉकिंग अबाउट seeing him off or anything we were just thinking of taking him on take him on <laughs> mm. so it was it was so much fun batting with him and that year in 2018 we were, we were ready to take anybody on it was His not like aussie aggression not only aussie aggression it was just the clarity of thought and that enjoyment factor like no it, it's a ball he is bowling so why not why not whack it what's the worst that's going to happen Hmm. So let's enjoy it. Let's, you know, throw everything at it. He was like sort of a leader in the dressing room, also hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's a tremendous guy. He's a great team man, and everybody enjoyed you know, being there, you know, being around him. He was he was a great team man. Yeah. yeah. Do you think like the younger generation understands the impact Shane Watson has had on IPL? Everyone's. <laughs> and everyone understands right i don't know i mean see ipl i don't know ipl spectators a lot of them come for the entertainment and a lot of good uh spectators who understand the game they come for uh, learning or they enjoy the intric- intricacies of cr- cricket. cricket but most of them come for the entertainment especially the college student they they, they don't understand anything yeah Uh, but i think that core of fans who actually understands the game is the one that's going to take the it forward from a fan yeah, perspective yeah, yeah. also of course yeah even even these podcasts we try going deeper with cricket conversations because of this this is fan questions mm-hmm. which broadcasters don't answer and don't ask you guys for yeah. some reason uh so i get the chance to do that instead um but okay speaking about foreign teammates i want to ask you about uh, pollard as well Okay. <laughs> What was Pollard like as a teammate? Like in same thing as Shane Watson in terms of IPL legend, he's contributed yeah. too much to the IPL. I'm sure he was also leader and he is a leader in the yeah. Mumbai Indians dressing room. Obviously, what was he like as a teammate? No, he's uh, I and mean, he's been tremendous for MI, and you no, know, he has he has in the time I think in 2010 from 2010 he has improved almost every year. and that's that's his biggest trait and he has been when he has won us a few games when i was with mi that i don't think it would have been possible with any other player or not yeah he has had such great impact and it was always fun batting with him <laughs> and the only complaint i have is he never used to run <laughs> for him he can play the three dot balls and it is six so he'll be six or four mm. but for me i'll have to run A couple of twos or one, and then it is six. So to maintain the same strike rate, so he would never listen. Eventually, he had to. I told him, <laughs> "You will finish my career." Because <laughs> <laughs> you all used to bat very close to each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sure there's been like a lot of moments where that's yeah. happened. Um, what was his greatness, other than the obvious power and size? What was his greatness? I think he's very, very smart as a batsman. He's not. Uh, he's not like that. hitter who just comes in to hit the ball is very very smart in what he does that is the reason why he's been so successful over a over a period of time and uh, you know with his power with his skill i think uh, i'm sure he could have done a lot more but uh, what he has done for mi i think mi should always be thankful to <laughs> to pollard yeah to pollard okay um you know one of my goals in life is to earn a lot of money because i want to pay mitchell stark and polar to have a ufc fight with each other <laughs> <laughs> i want to see them in an mma fight just to complete that <laughs> were you part of mumbai indians in that yeah, match yeah. what had happened in the dressing room nothing i, I don't think anything has happened i think he just moved away for some reason uh, you know how aussies are generally not all of them but they can be aggressive yeah they can be aggressive so Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think he went to throw a bat at him. He just, he just slipped. That's what I feel. But that meme stayed for <laughs> one decade after that. Yeah. Okay. But uh, did you all have a conversation with Pollard after that? क्या भाई? ठंडे रहो भाई. Did you have that conversation? <laughs> <laughs> not, not really. But uh, everybody knew it was actually a fun moment. There's nothing too aggressive about it. 
so when this happens on the field you guys actually internally laugh a little bit yeah yeah because <laughs> <laughs> this at the end of the day there is a bro culture yeah, in the locker room ki kya jhagad raha hai correct exactly no i mean because see as a cricketer you know you know them in and out as your teammate so you know why he is doing something on the ground you know the exact reason behind it very rarely it is a fight on the ground it is because of something that has built up or you know his character so we know exactly what is going on so we keep smiling okay um you also played with a young hardik pandya and a young bumrah yeah, yeah. could you tell that these guys will become india players hardik definitely had tremendous talent i think uh, baroda when i was playing for baroda we had coach uh, sanat kumar he kept on saying you know this guy has tremendous talent tremendous talent so he played for baroda and then came to mi for some trials or netball and they looked at him and they picked him up i think from then on he has done absolutely well i think bumra i think john wright has uh, actually scouted bumra saying that you know he is going to be a really good bowler i still remember his first game where he got virat he said the, he did he said <laughs> go away <in. laughs> so no from then on to where uh, both of them have come is so great to see and uh, you know it makes us smile because we have seen them grow up to become the superstars that they have become i think you know that's what indian cricket and ipl is about bringing about that talent and making cricketers into superstars yeah what was a young hardik like in the locker room no it was always the same i feel in his art is always the same is is very what do you call uh, bubbly energetic and uh, even now he is the same he is a very good person at heart yeah. he still remains the same but in terms of training could you see something different in him because there is an intensity in hardik pandya also which i think a lot of amateur cricket fans would have discounted when he was younger they would have thought he's a relaxed west indies style guy but nerd cricket fans know his intensity because he's turned up for india in very difficult moments yeah. uh in the recent past that's why you get to know the character of the person that's why he's the t20 captain now uh could you see that intensity when he was younger also yeah of course all, all the time because see they have come up from a very humble background both him and his brother and they worked really hard to get to where they have in life and uh, you know that character of you know, that strength inside has always been there to go that extra mile to train you know train that much harder so everything was always there within him and i don't think he was ever that relaxed character is always he seems like that but he always works really hard that's how he's a top all rounder yeah of course he is i think he is the best all rounder in the world i think for a while maybe if you with, with ben stokes hmm. both of them i think are the best all rounders in the world why don't we see more seam bowling all rounders come out of the indian circuit that is uh, because of the i think mostly the conditions and the climate and some of the domestic setups they don't look after them well as in they get injured yeah because it's very tough to be a seam bowling all rounder especially coming from india in the domestic circuit where especially the climate it's not too kind when you're playing four day cricket like you're saying the heat yeah the in heat india is heat. a big factor yeah heat in india is a big factor and also the condition some of the wickets can be flat and they keep bowling you no they keep over bowling you some of the domestic setups they don't look after their players so that's where i think a lot of good talent is lost so in hardik pandya's case what went correct for him to actually become that so in hardik pandya's india? case the best thing for him is mi what happened is when he got into the mumbai indian setup they looked after him really well so they guided him properly so, health wise also i must no, say in every way in every way they have guided him into becoming you know a really good cricketer and and from then on it is his hard work which has brought him to where he is right now so but that guidance i think uh, definitely has come from mi at an early age how do you guide an all rounder actually Be- because i mean this is very yeah. amateur fan perspective say if you have total training of 20 hours in a week now as a batsman you obviously going to dedicate a bulk of that to batting but for an all rounder how do you divide the time and the training that way 
I think uh, for an all-rounder, the most important thing is not to over-bowl him. Over, sometimes over-training also. Because I think uh, giving him enough recovery in terms of even if that means him missing a game somewhere doesn't really matter. But to look after his interest is very important. And uh, I think uh, things have improved from when you compare to... 10-15 years ago and they need to improve a lot more especially in in the domestic circuit with the state teams they need to improve a lot more because everything is not channelized uh, uh, state A is very different to state B See, that is why you, you find uh, cricketers coming out of only few places only few places and some of them are really struggling in some states in every way, money, management. No, no, not money, but mostly management. As in they are either overused or yeah, not. Yeah, they are overused or if, if a good talented player is there, he was done well for under-19 India or something, goes back to play state cricket. Within a game or two, he's dropped for some reason. And you don't see them ever again. So they get lost in that whole domestic thing. Yeah. Is there a corruption in politics angle? I'm not. I'm not too sure. It's not generalized as such. They might be somewhere in you know some pockets, but I don't think it is the case at all. Corruption meaning in state cricket, not in BCC. BCC is very clean. Yeah. Um. So in state, because the cricket is such a large world in our country and it's so layered, you don't know what's going wrong in some random non-cricketing state. Yeah. That's what you're saying. That is what I'm saying. Okay. Um. Uh, you think we lose a lot of people who could have actually been India caliber players because of this? Yeah, of course, we would have lost a lot of talent up to now and right now because things are being set up really well by BCCI. So whoever comes through the system from the states and comes up is taken care of really well by BCCI. And they are the ones who are representing India now or who are becoming. But the ones who are not fortunate enough to come through that system because of some politics or some, they get lost. So I think... Uh, but do, do they make it to IPL? I mean, even to make it to IPL, you need to play state cricket. But where will people see you? People have to see you. But somehow, this local cricket, I don't think is that transparent in some states. Got it. How does one make it to the IPL, but... Play well in, uh, there's a T20 tournament called Mustakali. So you play well there or you play well in some of the tournaments. There are scouts from all the teams who go and watch these matches. So they pick up talent from there. Okay. But the mentality of those players is I want an IPL contract. Nowadays, it's become like that. But when we have started, it's about playing for India. But nowadays, most of the kids want to play in the IPL first. Who do you think was a great IPL teammate of yours who didn't get a chance to play for India? Who should have been selected? It's a tough one. <laughs> but most, most, see in CSK and MI, most of my teammates were all Indian cricketers. So it's very rarely, I don't think anybody, CSK, everybody are actually Indian players who have represented India. Okay. Maybe not your teammates. Maybe generally, in IPL, uh, you know, who was, as a fan, you saw and you said, okay, this guy has got too much caliber, but he never got a chance for India. I don't think there is anybody like that. Or lesser chances? See, that is the beauty of IPL, if you ask me. Whoever does well there in the IPL or has shown talent has, has gone on to play for the country. Mm. So that is the greatness of IPL. I don't think there is anybody who has missed out like that. Okay. So, as in the high caliber players, like the cream always rises to the top. Yeah, you could say that. Like if you're a great player, you will play an IPL and then IPL will give you that chance to play for India. Yeah. Okay, cool. Who's your current favorite young cricketer? I think for me, who's being underused by Indian cricket right now, I think is Ruturaj. I think he's, he has tremendous talent and uh, I think he's one guy who should be used more. Yeah. Should be given opportunities across formats. What is his greatness? His greatness is just his talent, his time on the ball, his shots, his fitness, and his temperament. He has everything to become a world-class cricketer. Okay. Um, 
can you talk about this temperament a little bit first maybe related to him and then generally what is a good temperament for an international player i mean it where is it you cannot have a constant or a same temperament but in case of rutu he is very very calm and he knows what he is doing and see he's most of you know he has that sense of silent aggression in him like dhoni bhai yes exactly i'm not very similar and he has that calmness about him and he reads the game well i think uh, i think he'll be a great asset for india, for india? yeah too early to say no, okay no not at all no no <laughs> yeah. what i'm going to say next is too early to say uh csk fans might agree with this but um maybe what i'm saying is too early and maybe it's just fan hype so i'm sorry if i'm creating fan hype but a guy like that mentality is an out and out pick for captaincy also in many sides yeah hopefully you know after dhoni bhai he'll start leading csk and then on never know he might go on to lead india and he has already led india asian games hmm got it um what makes a good captain i mean a good captain should have a, a long term vision not i mean he should should also have the aggression to compete on that day but also have a long term vision of you know what the team can do over a period of time so i think a combination of all that and being very calm yeah, yeah. calmness is like the main factor you feel yeah calmness because see you can't you can't be hyper and keep judging people every day you can't have a different opinion you know you cannot have a changing opinion over a period of time you need to keep your opinions constant so you need to take your time to form that opinion about a player or what he can do for you so once you have done that you need to stick with your uh, decision and you know back the players i think that way that way as you know dhoni bhai has been tremendous and i'm sure every successful captain even rohit if you see he has a very similar style to it to dhoni bhai yeah in terms of backing his players or you know having a long term vision having a long term vision uh what was that indian dressing room like with mai bhai as the captain i mean it was as i said very very good calm relaxed sort of an environment even though even when the team was not doing well everything remained the same similar to csk captaincy yeah yeah very similar so that csk element of consistency calm yes. and all made way to, to the indian dressing room yeah, yeah. okay but you know dhoni bhai will have an uh, overarching presence in csk i don't think it was possible for him to keep his presence in the indian dressing room after he retired so when he is gone from the dressing room does the dynamic change a lot or does his culture stay a little bit no i think his culture will i think it will stay a lot of players have played under him even the guys who are leading the indian team now have played a lot uh, of cricket under dhoni bhai so the culture is slowly trickling down i think because now people will see rohit's captaincy they will also emulate it so it will keep it will keep trickling down and it's a it's a great thing for indian cricket yeah. it's like a chain like yeah. ganguly gave to dhoni dhoni gave to kohli and rohit rohit yeah. and kohli will give to the next generation yeah. okay are there ever fights in the dressing room no oh. it's it's a calm professional yeah, environment yeah, yeah, yeah. okay but are there ever arguments or anything like that no not at all nothing like that not at all what is the environment it's, there so, is brotherhood yeah yeah of course it is it, see with dhoni bhai it was very similar to i don't know but it's like everybody respected his opinion even even if you didn't agree with it with a new but you always respected him because you always knew he would do it in the best interest of the team So that is the respect everybody has towards the captain. Mm. Okay, got it. Are you getting bored in this conversation? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> like, wh- what are you thinking about this format, podcasting? Like, I'm just asking you all these fan questions. What we discuss internally amongst each other. Format, as in the podcast. Yeah. yeah this yeah. is not like I'm. It's not just a question and answer thing. Yeah. So, how does it feel being asked these questions as a cricketer? I mean, it's slightly weird. It is. Like, <laughs> it is like. 
it's like i've never enjoyed answering these questions because most of my friends are non cricketers so every time we go back from a tournament go home to hyderabad they all sit down and ask this same question it is so weird answering them i'll be like okay yeah this <laughs> they ask you what what happened here yeah, can you explain this and they have their own opinions they have their own analysis and we can't even fight them it is it is like they're absolutely ignorant but they think they know everything it's so hard to explain the professional explain the, side of things yeah. hmm is that generally how many fan opinions are like if someone has very sharp opinions it's yeah, not yeah, actually yeah. what's happening i think 99.99% of the opinions are not right yeah not right only professional cricketers actually can understand what's happening no and that to not everyone these days uh, the way they sit and talk in the commentary box in the media rooms i don't think they talk a lot of sense i think they just do it for the media house more than you know their own proper opinion about the game i hear a lot of current cricketers saying this about the commentary teams and like the pundits in the broadcasting studio uh, why is this happening like in terms of why why are the pundits pissing off the current cricketers or rather why the current no, cricketers no i don't think they're pissing off anything i don't think current cricketers even pay attention to what they're saying to be very honest i I think it's just that I don't know they're just doing it for the money that they are getting maybe they're not some sometimes I see these commentators on TV talk nonsense absolute nonsense <laughs> so yeah some of them are doing a good job but some of them are just wiling away time who's your favorite guy to listen to I think in terms of uh, you know, to bring bring up the emotion and all that maybe Ravi Shastri sometimes hmm but in terms of cricketing analysis i don't now a lot of young guys who i have played with are doing a fantastic job they're talking more sense who like like irfan mm even raina so yeah they're doing a great job they're talking they talk a lot of sense mm yeah. got it how do you look back at your full cricketing career because i actually saw you for the first time in icl that's my hyderabad heroes you played for <laughs> how do you remember icl i mean icl and that's that's an entire episode in itself yeah oh my god so uh, it was like to give gen z's the context it was a bit of a breakaway league as yeah, in cricket yeah, in our yeah. countries prime now it's only governed by bcci yeah. but that time imagine there was like a sort of second bcci and there was an exodus of a lot of ranji players into icl yeah. along with some legends at that time so imagine tomorrow chris gale starts playing in icl uh, shane watson starts playing in icl that's what was happening for 2005 ish i think yeah uh, so what was it from your eyes as a domestic player so i mean we we were having a lot of problems with hyderabad in terms of hca hyderabad cricket association so most of us were most of us were we didn't we didn't want to stay there we wanted to move away and they were not treating us well they were trying to drop us So there were various reasons why they were doing that, and for us, for us, it was like, you know, why do why do we have to suffer so much? Let us let us go and play something. And for me, it was very very frustrating because uh, I've had issues with the HCA secretary back then, Shivlal Yadav, because his son was playing and all that, and he didn't want anybody else from Hyderabad coming up. so and and i just want to say that yeah. i don't remember what the trophy was but you were the mvp or something in season 1 of yeah, yeah. icl <laughs> right i remember that's how i got to know you because i used to watch icl games regularly yeah i mean icl did a lot of good for me as well because if i was there in hyderabad for too long maybe i would have just given up cricket really yeah so back then you know it was sort of a great thing for me because i met steve rickson he was a coach he taught us a lot of things about being professional at a very young age how to train how to go about a game so from then on from icl uh, the lot of ipl franchises saw icl yeah. and they wanted to pick me later on so it helped me a lot so when the icl was being formed the media would talk a lot about the icl that this is happening and there was no chatter about anything called the ipl and i think at least from my eyes as a fan the ipl came up as a response to the icl and then they had i remember this big meeting they had where they called glen magra and all the top players at that time who hadn't signed with icl said that okay these guys will play now on ipl for a while it was okay, going to be icl versus ipl that i'm not too sure about but uh, i didn't know what happened behind the scenes definitely 
आई पी एल डेड अ लॉट ऑफ गुड फॉर अस हु आर जेन्युअन क्रिकेटर्स हु डिड वेल देयर इन लॉट ऑफ आई पी एल फ्रांचाइजेस पिक पिक अ लॉट ऑफ प्लेयर्स फ्रॉम देयर एंड वू हैव गॉन ऑन टू डू वेल इन द आई पी एल इवेंचुअली इट्स आई डोंट आई डोंट सी इट बींग ग्रेट डिटरमेंट to me because i would have given up cricket people say that if you wouldn't have been in the icl you would have gone on to play for the country a lot more earlier you but think so? no that's people's opinion but they don't know the exact reality of why we went to icl what what was going on in our heads you know we were on the verge of giving up the sport entirely so i think uh, you know if given given the circumstances i would take it fair <laughs> who was a very cool icl teammate of yours like foreigner foreigner uh, you know we had a uh, couple of good guys chris harris if you remember yeah yeah <laughs> and uh, all rounder from yeah. new zealand and uh, jimmy mar from australia he was an opener they were really really good guys when the icl stopped did you have any tension not at all because already in our heads we were fixated or we were thinking that you know we are done with hyderabad or hyderabad cricket but when bcci gave us this amnesty saying that you can come back it was like you know it was like a rebirth then you, then i thought yeah now given this opportunity I should go on to play for india i should not miss the chance so we went all out in terms of doing everything mm-hmm. and you know the icl used to run their stuff in a very interesting way there was a t20 tournament also and then i remember they had a 50 over thing also at some point towards the end i don't think there was a 50 over there thing. was i think 150 over match which they played or oh, i think it was international no, yeah, match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry it, sorry, they, sorry it was an international game saying that it was india versus pakistan or something like that as in the icl indian all stars versus yes 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 uh, like the pakistani pakistan, all stars yeah, and all that okay it my point is it was very interesting icl was very watchable for cricket fans uh so i'll tell you what my mindset was when this amnesty got announced i'm not just saying this because you're sitting i remember having this conversation with my cricket bros saying that whichever team gets amrithi raid will be very lucky and then my team got amrithi raid <laughs> so it felt very nice man to like see you play in ipl yeah. i remember you and r satish uh, played yeah, for mumbai indians r satish yes uh, not wrong yes i think uh, no even i had a choice between three teams back then it was there was no option i could sign up for any side so i had a choice between dc deccan chargers kkr and mi so uh, i mean because robin singh was there he was my under 19 india coach and everything and uh, sachin paji you know was interested so i said that's an easy choice like sachin paji called you himself no he called through kiran sir kiran sir was you know he was also a part of icl but uh, he was a part of mi going forward yeah. you played under him as captain who sachin tendulkar yeah yeah in the ipl right towards the end of his ipl career no paji played uh, i think paji played three or four seasons okay there was but one but he captained only one or two seasons if i am not wrong i think he got orange cap in one season if i am not yeah, mistaken yeah see 2010 played under paji's captaincy i think 11 also what was it like being in his locker room no oh, it was i was awestruck even now you know, I, i never managed to get comfortable because you always have seen him as a god as an idol growing up so it was great i mean i think he is one once in a generation or even more kind of a cricketer so he had that presence and everybody in indian cricket loved him yeah. was it overwhelming being in yeah, that yeah, dressing room yeah of course room? it was definitely overwhelming but uh, he made us very comfortable At the end of the day he is the god of cricket so you you always were overwhelmed did you ever ask him batting doubts yeah he used to help me a lot even while batting in the middle so he had I mean, he is tremendous there's no there no words for him to be very honest was he also able to predict the game like dhoni bhai yeah yeah definitely that was a big part of his batting yeah, huge part huge part of his batting i think somehow he knew what was going to happen or what the bowler was trying to do or going to bowl so 
he was he was great that way why doesn't that happen to all senior players like why aren't they able to predict the game after a point no everybody have very different styles in terms of how they have come up in you know in the game and what made them successful so i think these things only a few people can do and they are they are a little apart from born above us born above us <laughs> <me. Yeah. laughs> okay yeah. what do you think made him special actually as a player like how what was the reason behind his i mean success? i don't think anything made him special he has made our country special <laughs> he has True. put india on the map otherwise cricket was i think cricket ideally started with him i mean indian cricket to dominate such good fast bowlers abroad the indian team was not a great uh, side back when he was playing i don't think he had great partners to bat with like how now nowadays i think in 6 or 7 you all of them are really good so back then i don't think he had such great partners you know to bat with even then he was tremendous yeah who was the most intense fast bowler you faced in your whole career it was difficult facing a person i mean <laughs> it's it's difficult facing any fast bowler but yeah <laughs> no why why like the, the fans may not understand what you just said explain that also why is it difficult facing any fast bowler so i mean while while growing up i don't think there were such great facilities to practice fast bowling they were not that fast fast bowlers in india where you could go into the nets and face them so later on eventually when the bowling machine came when you have these uh, throw down <laughs> sticks and all that now it's become much more easier but when i was starting or when we were growing up we had to you know wait play with some you know synthetic balls on concrete and some all those things to jugad fast bowling jugad <laughs> fast bowling <laughs> but nowadays it's much easier and at that time uh, what paji did in international cricket was uh, unbelievable unheard of uh what is the difference between facing a 130 km per hour ball 140 and 150 How does it feel different from your eyes as a world class batsman? Right now, the more stable you are, it's all pretty easy. But uh, definitely, one fifty feels fast. Can you see the ball? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, we see the ball. It's just about reacting that much more faster. I don't think it's even the reaction; it is just being stable. Actually, the lesser you move. even sometimes even the lesser you move your feet the easier it is to play real fast bowling the fitter you are no the lesser you move the lesser you move yeah both like how virupa ji he played i mean nobody i don't think anybody has played fast bowling as well as him the way he played he, he didn't move much so he had the best i think technique by move much you mean not like move your body also little yeah, yeah move your you, head move your head, head. Move okay. your body, yeah. Are you also talking about not moving the mind? Mind, not not really. Mind is obviously focused on watching the ball and reacting. I don't think you can uh, you can think too much and plan too much. You just need to watch the ball and react. Okay. So that reaction comes from what you have practiced over the years. Got it. Like your nervous system gets used to facing. yeah because you have practiced so much in life obviously it's about reacting to the ball that has been bowled so you can't think that if he bowls this i'm playing this no it's just that you react to the ball because you have already done all that in training hmm so basically in your training over the years your muscles and your nervous system have been worked to be able to react to yeah. different balls which are thrown at you yeah like and it's like a muscle memory kind of a thing okay but then at international level it gets difficult because everyone is trained to a large <laughs> degree and then it becomes a mental battle exactly. at inter yes correct to say this absolutely yeah that's the difference between ipl and international also no i think nowadays even ipl has become very very competitive so the early days of ipl maybe you could say you could you know get one uh, you know easy bowler or two or three indian batsmen who are not really ready playing in the ipl but nowadays it's all so competitive it's as good as good international teams playing yeah. okay um 
but you agree that it becomes a fully mental battle at international level it becomes no, more decisions it becomes a mental battle at every level of cricket you play it's all i think it is more mental than physical sport is all i think i don't know maybe i can't put a percentage but i think about 70 80% mental yeah and by mental battle you mean being able to predict your opponent's moves not predict but being able to stay clear yeah calm think you know think quickly on your feet assess the situation the environment you know picking up those small cues and that's what decide decides a cricketer's success that's what decides your success on the day and then if you do it consistently if you do it consistently keep adapting keep learning over a period of time then you will be able to survive for say you know, however long that you want to play keep learning what but keep learning like say keep learning and keep adapting like if you can play a certain ball in a certain manner then if you are satisfied with it then next year somebody is going to come and bowl something else that you will get stuck with so you still need to play that ball in a different manner you need to keep learning and you know there is so much to learn it's not like i don't i don't think anybody is perfect you need to keep on learning every day keep on adapting was there a particular kind of delivery that you found difficult but that you were able to overcome yeah a lot of lot of times every year it's a new challenge every season you start you know sometimes the easiest of balls that you would have played you would they would seem very difficult that particular season you still need to adapt do something else that is working you need to be ideally flexible in your head got it yeah uh, is there an element of fear when you are ever facing any bowler element of fear meaning not in terms of physical physical fear i don't think uh, i don't think 90% of the batsmen have it i think it's just about the fear of getting out sometimes that, that might be there but not not the fear of uh, physically getting hit i don't okay. think who is the most intense fast bowler you face now like if one name or you can take multiple names if you wish intense i think recently maybe jofra archer jofra archer was quick and bumrah yeah later on when i was finishing my career yes <laughs> playing against him yeah he was quite quite hard to face why because of his action and he's become as, as i said uh, he's become better and better and better and we were we were going down in terms of our the age or whatever you can call it he added some speed also to his bowling over time yeah, speed so is that how and, and with bumrah it is not only speed because where he delivers the ball is much more ahead like he delivers it a feet and a half in front of his body so that's already a a feet and a half quicker so if he, if he's bowling at 140 that means he's bowling at 150 plus got it. a guy who is delivering behind the ball has to travel that much longer got it got it so are you saying that that little speed meter that we see on tv as fans that is that accurate i don't know no somehow i don't feel that is accurate wow really no accurate meaning as a batsman because some some bowlers feel a lot more faster and some bowlers who are bowling at 1 145 150 they don't seem that fast Damn. so it's not because of the meter maybe it's just because of their action or you are more comfortable against a certain bowler as a batsman so all that with the other batsmen i don't we don't see the speedometer as such no okay um so you're saying bumrah won the speed was crazy no, bumrah because of his action and his skill because he can swing the ball he has he has so much skill in him yeah he was able to do a lot of different things with that one same ball you couldn't no, predict the same action he can do so much a yeah. lot of lot of bowlers are one dimensional but bumra is not so with a lot of balls you can say acha now this is going to be an in swing this is going to be an in swing yeah a lot of balls you can predict most of the times but with bumra it's very difficult okay who was another bowler like that like bumra who you had faced I before him before him like bumra i don't think there is any bowler who is that skillful especially in white ball in red ball yes 
faced a lot of bowlers who are very skillful, but white ball, I don't think anybody is as skillful as Bumrah. Is he the goat Indian fast bowler? Yeah, yeah, of course. Wow. Goat meaning, yeah, I think, I think so. Like at least for many fans, that's what we consider yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Like there's no one who's Especially been especially for this level. generation. Yes, but yeah. Zaire Khan was equally good. Those yeah. bowlers I've seen. Had you faced Zaire Khan? Yeah, yeah, he's very very skillful. And in his early age, he was very fast. And same similar problem like Bumrah, like facing Bumrah, like that you couldn't predict what's going uh, to happen. Zaire Bhai was, he had all the skills. He, I mean, he's of that generation where you know he. He took Indian fast bowling forward. Like after Jagal Srinath, it was Zaire Khan. But now we have so many more bowlers. So they were like one in a generation kind of bowlers. Got it. Uh, what demon do you think possessed Mohammad Shami on this World Cup? <laughs> <laughs> no, Shami was always good. I think uh, he was running in way faster this World Cup. He put in everything that he had. I think his running, you know, his running through the crease was tremendous. He in many interviews post matches he said that it's all about rhythm. I've come into rhythm. Yes. People don't. Understand. What What does that mean? Rhythm, rhythm meaning you know you don't everything falls into place without much effort. Like it is like like a pendulum. You do don't. You, do you think again it could be your muscles and your nervous system just getting in sync? And also you know kind of training practice and kind of mindset that you are in. You know that clarity of thought. So he was running in brilliantly, running through the crease. He was running in way faster in this World Cup, and he was tremendous. Do you think it took a toll on his body to play at this level? Of course, Shami had a lot of issues. You know, we both almost have done a rehab for our knees together. I know what he has gone through. He has gone through a lot of hardship and being a fast bowler. And from coming back from that, to have done what he has done in this World Cup is unbelievable. It is, you know, true showcase of his character, his strength. Yeah, you know, all Indian fans are very aware of what happened in his personal life also, and I'm sure personal life plays a role in your performance on the field also, hundred and ten percent. But for him to bounce back from that. You know, going through that publicly, etc., and then becoming the Mohammad Shami we know from the 2023 World Cup, World Cup monster he's become now. You know, so uh, I'm I'm not honestly too well uh, well aware of his personal life to be very honest, but I'm sure he has gone through a lot of uh, you know a lot of turmoil during that time, and to bounce back, as I said, just shows how strong he is mentally and. How much he he wants to do it for his country. I think that's a great showcase of his skill. Definitely, he always had the skill. But as I said, the way he was running in in the World Cup, he just wanted to give it his all. Unfortunately, you know, we all would have loved to see our team lift the trophy. But you know, that's all. That's all a team can do. You can give it everything, and uh, I think everyone have. Give it! I have given it everything this World Cup. By what does that mean in terms of fast bowling? Giving it your all is it like aggression again? Aggression is not uh, vocal. It is about how you run in. You know, giving that extra, extra bit of effort every single ball. Sometimes you might slack off, saying that okay, in six balls, I'll I'll give you know two or three balls of effort, and let me just put it in an area. I don't think anybody was doing that. They were running in and giving their all in every single ball that they have bowled. Why do you think this Mohammad Siraj, Mohammad Shami, Jaspreet Bumrah trio performed the way they did? Like they gave it their all. My question is why? What was different about this bowling setup? No, well, they're just very clear on what they were going to do, and they've improved their skills over a period of time. And skills meaning what they, what they. Would have done with the ball, like you know, if somebody is good at in swing, they have developed a ball which would do something else, like like Siraji bowls that in cutter sort of a ball, which is very very effective, and uh, you know Shami, you know, he swings it both ways. Bumrah with his all his skill, and they were very very clear on what they were 
going to do or supposed to do i think that's great credit to rohit sharma as a captain who has you know given the given them the platform and the freedom to do it i think uh, that was a great combination that was happening there who do you think is next up in terms of indian fast bowling who there, a- there are a lot of good fast bowlers now like you have arshadeep singh you have uh, prasith there yeah, are a lot of great fast bowling talent that is coming through is the best way to manage a fast bowling talent giving them rest and not making them play everything no it is very important to play cricket as well you know but you know that's that fine balance every individual should know as well as we have really great trainers and physios nowadays so they all assess you know how much load they can take or whatever so i think uh, i think they know they know what they're doing to be very honest i'm sure uh, i'm sure all all the guys are in great hands now all right uh, in many of the ipl seasons you were always near the top in terms of run scored no <laughs> I, i used to play a lot of batting in the middle middle order finishing Adam, csk csk yes. one out season and mi one season the only two seasons that i've played slightly up top but most of them were everywhere still like you yeah. you were able to consistently score runs yeah. what does it take to consistently score runs in ipl like how does one win an orange cap like is there a particular mentality you need to go in with i think orange caps are mostly with openers okay because they get a longer time yeah, to yeah of course and uh, I, i if you have noticed there's a very interesting thing that we all think about i mean at least me csk whichever teams win whichever team wins an orange cap generally ends up losing the ipl hmm. <laughs> but there was one, there was this one year i think in dubai rutu won the orange cap in the final we didn't let him wear it i was <laughs> i was the one who was forcing him not to wear the orange cap till we win the final <laughs> <laughs> because so, of this same yeah because of this thing and and hey, even even if you see this world cup most of the runs big runs all the stats were with indian team Australia didn't have any big run scorers, but they won the World Cup. So, see, there are a lot of great things. See, winning an orange cap, winning a purple cap is great. But how are the other ten of them playing, or other nine of them contributing? See, that is what wins you tournaments. Yeah. Like, why did Travis Head also have to be possessed on that day? <laughs> I mean. See, there are hundred things that we can talk about, but unfortunately, you know, we couldn't do it. Yeah. Do you want to talk about Pat Cummins' captaincy? Not, not really. I mean, <laughs> see, it'll all feel very rosy, and all feel like they have done some some extraordinary thing or anything. I don't think, I don't think any team has played better than us in this World Cup. Yeah, fair. And I don't think anybody has captained better than Rohit Sharma in this World Cup. Yeah. So it's just unfortunate. do you talk to any of the current players no not really i'm i mean what's the <laughs> to talk about no i mean like i don't touch with like anyone who no not really not really i just even while playing i was more kind of a private guy i just, still i'm in touch with a few friends but mostly i'm into different things you know generally in life what are you up to i am now you know doing a lot of public service getting into politics wow yeah okay. and uh, you know spending a lot of time in andhra pradesh in guntur my native place so going around meeting already you know went to 100 villages wow. met a lot of people understanding their problems is it like a new innings in your life not only a new innings always been fascinated by how india lives you know what we can do for india i mean how can we give back to the society how does india live you know it's it's not it's not the same as a stadium or you know being in a skyscraper in bombay and thinking that we know india but india is so diverse and it's so different and lots of problems to lots be solved lots of problems to be solved it's a lot of learning and everybody have a, every place has a different culture and so i'm finding out ways in which i can help them so i'm thankful that you know the ruling government there has 
facilitated me into you know doing all that ambati ride for pm 2044 no <laughs> <laughs> no pm and all that but i'm i'll be very happy to do well for people in guntur yeah. how come you got into politics like when did this thought come no, in my father my grandfather they were all very interested in you know public service my grandfather was huge in that area in terms of doing surveys and everything and also i got a call from you know uh ysrcp so they were uh, they were very interested in me getting into public life going and going on to the ground meeting people understanding what i can do for them so so it's a great uh, initiative from them as well to get people from different backgrounds especially young people to come into politics to be sincere not be corrupt mm. to, uh, to change the face of politics as to say did any of your cricket learnings come into play of course of course like? because because it is like say in cricket like how my boy has always said you know you do your role more than that you can't do anything so even i think politics for me is the same if i can help people of my district to the best of my ability so that is all i can do being sincere so politics have to change at some point if not today tomorrow a lot of young blood has to come in and they should change the image of politics first yeah so, no i think that's why a lot of young people are not into politics yet but people are starting to become curious yes. if you have very realistic conversations like this right. like if i was a listener i'd be excited about your political career because i know ambati rai do the cricketer you know i'd be curious to know what uh you do in your political life as well uh, i want to tell you one cricket thing actually now mm. uh about you as a cricketer like even when you just went outside right now for a little break you know what we were discussing inside as cricket fans we were like he is a streets won't forget cricketer have you heard this term streets won't forget it's a term used for footballers Football, okay like i don't how into football are you yeah quite disappointed now for a while but uh, for manchester united yeah. <laughs> 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 for a while but yeah i still follow okay i'll give you a manchester united reference tevez you remember yeah yeah, yeah. he's a streets won't forget footballer footballer like just he made his mark and you won't forget that player till you die you all you'll tell your grandkids they used to be player like you one of those players like in terms of cricket yeah. like and that's how all the fans remember you like again what i said at the start very consistent can i say something like little transparently yeah, yeah, yeah. uh because i feel now my eyes is broken with you <laughs> um we there's a a lot of us and i know you can't ever look back at the past and say that you know this is what happened that should have happened but there's a lot of cricket fans and i think even yuvraj singh has said this on the show that you should have been given more chances for india i mean see everybody's story is going to be different yeah so my story has been very very different i have i mean in hindsight you would think that you know if you'd have got more chances it would have been great of course it would have been great but i've been with the team i've sat sat out for i think double or triple the number of games that i've played i've been with the team so i've been in an environment where if if you take my life uh during the icl when i had i've given up on cricket i've given up on everything from that stage to come back to play the ipl to play for india i think it's for me i'm happy you're you satisfied you're contented with yeah i'm i would say i'm happy i'm con- i'm content because see that is what i've worked for so you know maybe i i could not go on to play those number of games or whatever but i'm happy that i could play it on my own terms i played it the way i wanted to play never asked anybody for any favor yeah throughout my life in terms of whatever selection or whatever so I always enjoyed playing the sport so i'm i'm quite happy here yeah. i want to tell you one thing as a podcast also what you're saying about you being quite happy i can feel it 
as a podcast host and i'm sure listeners can feel it also that you're actually a happy guy yeah of course but you know maybe somewhere as a cricket nerd fan we feel like i the number four spot you know it was ambati raidus maybe yes that world cup yes in 2019 yeah definitely i told in many interviews if not me there was aju there hmm i mean why why didn't you take a number 4 proper number 4 like shreyas this world cup he has done tremendously well like rahul that that role that they have played that is what your number 4 and number 5 have to do it is not it's not rocket science somehow they didn't understand and i mean it's, it's quite shocking like it's too important for an odi Game. Of course, what do you see? Your number four has always been a bridge, and it's a transition from your openers to your big hitters. You always need one batsman at least, if not two. Especially in England, maybe you needed two like that, but at least one who could do that role. I think this was what all the fans also felt. This was a very common narrative. Sometimes you feel like how now we've lost this final, so there'll be some fans who'll blame X Y Z player, mm-hmm. whatever. at that and and it doesn't even make sense but at that point when fans were bringing up this ambati raidu at number 4 thing it made a lot of logical sense to a lot of the nerd fans how did it feel when the whole country was talking about you like this but i was always thinking what's the use <laughs> what's the point now i mean i am i'm very practical that way it how does it matter if we talk about it now it should have been thought about it back then that is what i always have said if not If not me, pick somebody who could do that job. Hmm. When you're going in for a World Cup, you're not going in for some personal league tournament where you know it's. You should always put your interests, you know, behind the country's interest. Your country's interest should always come ahead of everything. Like how with with my boy, that is the greatest thing. It is not like see most of my games that I have sat out is under his captaincy. but i would never complain because this is interest is always team first team first if i was not playing does not mean that he doesn't like me it is because at that point in time the team needs something else in his mind which he is always i mean right about it or true to himself in terms of his decisions but sometimes during that phase i don't think it was it was going on that way but now with rohit i mean it's I, I mean, it's brilliant captaincy, brilliant captaincy, and brilliant the way they have picked the side, the kind of players that they have picked is tremendous. And it is not that they have picked somebody out of the blue; they have they have made them play a lot of cricket before, for, for I think three or four years. Yeah, I think that was the other argument in your favor as well. You had a very good track record before that, so it that's why it also didn't make logical sense to us. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> that's uh that was two world cups <laughs> no one world cup before so yeah now it's gone sometimes it's just destiny i don't think it is destiny as such it is just that sometimes it is just stupidity more than anything yeah. do you do you think that you know how you said you're a private guy you you are definitely introverted bro like yeah. as i've got to know <laughs> that like even outside yeah. and it's okay i've had introverted guests on the show I am that extroverted friend that every introvert wants. <laughs> But my point is, you're introverted. Do you think that because you're an introvert and you didn't gel with like everyone very very openly, that could have played a role? No, not really. I'm 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 an introvert to people who don't know me. Okay. I'm I'm actually quite friendly to people who know me. So I've I've gelled well with everybody in the side. That's that's not an issue. God. Yeah, maybe sometimes you know this, uh, especially that that team management. They thought just because I was calm, quiet, I was always to myself. They thought maybe I was not too confident. That's some stupid logic, you know. These guys come up with sometimes. How can you judge somebody's confidence just by looking at him? So that is, you know, the typical mindset a few people carry. Yeah. You think you got judged wrongly? All my life. All your life, <laughs> all my life. Like what? You know, some, some way or the other. Yeah, that's because people sometimes. I don't respond in ways that socially you should respond. You know, 
the kind of kind of signals like there are so- society's norms norms yeah so, i don't i've never lived by them so do yeah there there were a lot of people who at an early age felt i was very arrogant and all that so so be it okay you're not arrogant at all like that i mean at least i don't think i'm arrogant no i mean i, I do podcast every day i've seen all <laughs> kinds of people but you're a very chill sports oriented guy dude like uh, that's and I, the audience is intelligent now like at people pick it up people have over the course of this conversation also the one thing that strikes out about you is humility which i see with a lot of top athletes honestly um like to be able to play cricket for your country you need a certain pure core i feel on the inside fair to say yeah yeah it's fair to say like you need that little purity on the inside so no, a lot of lot of uh, players that i have played with in teams most of them have come from humble backgrounds they know in their hearts that you know everybody remembers their roots and nowadays a lot of cricketers are really good human beings at least from when i have gone into the indian team i don't think this anybody was in like a really bad guy or but some people have obviously gotten carried away they do it because of fame and all the frills around the game but uh, most of them i still feel are really really good human beings okay but you can get carried away by the excesses yeah, of course, and the fame of course uh, i would call them the frills around the game like what like everything money everything other than playing the sport on the ground is a frill girl attention money everything girl attention money media so everything i mean people around you always saying yes man yes man yeah yes, yes man around you but sometimes these yes men are good in a way because they they don't let you know the reality so that you're in a good good <laughs> confident zone which helps them play so for some people it works but for practical people i don't think uh, it's a it's a great circle to be in i'm sorry i'm taking you back to that place but we talk about mental health a lot on this show and i think guys men need to open up a little more about what's actually happening in the heart um when that team was announced in 2019 what went on in your head like you immediately let go knowing like you know you have this one athlete side of you which is like quite detached and all that do you immediately let it go or did it sit emotionally in no 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 it did sit emotionally for a very long time say i wouldn't i don't think it's so easy to let go of things like that but uh, took me a long while to come out of it so it eventually i i mean i announced my retirement i didn't want to play the ipl so csk had a big role even uh, i remember i still remember even lakshman by calling me and saying don't give up so i i took a break and then went on to play some league in chennai just to you know play a sport again so once i played those one or two league games then i started loving the sport back like this is what i enjoy doing this is what so then i played the ipl <laughs> no, no no then i played out. i went on to play another uh, i think 3 years 4 years of ipl we were all very happy to see that honestly like yeah, every but, time but as mi fans how would you feel for you see no, M- mi I'm fans i mean i felt bad <laughs> seeing one of our top guys play in a yellow no, jersey no, but the thing is we have equal uh, mi's record of five ipls don't now. say we and all you are yeah, we is your <laughs> no i'm a csk i mean i just retired from csk so yeah hurts you saying we <laughs> referring to csk but my point is a lot of mi fans are also cricket nerd fans yeah. and it was just happy seeing you do really well for chennai after 2019 that kind of hurts the nerd fans a lot the pain of the 2019 world cup for sure mm-hmm. but specifically you not being at number 4 you know like that's how like what i said about you being consistent that's one bubble of how you remember you the other bubble is everyone feels a little angry that you weren't a part of that squad mm-hmm. you, so just be aware of that as a bro like <laughs> yeah. as in there's a lot of people who hold you and your career in a very positive place yeah of course see even i hold it that way because from the background that i have come up from so without any support without any backing always people in my case it is not only backing it is about people trying to pull me down at every stage 
they were not making me play because that time when we started there was no media there was no ipl it was whatever they would say you understand it yeah. was yeah. whatever the power f- powerful people would go on to tell they would create narratives about yeah they they can they can make you get lost in the system mm. easily mm. so there were a lot of things that i had to deal with at an early age which i feel you know makes it makes everything even more sweeter yeah so a lot of people might think in their thinking they might think that okay he should have gone on to play he should have done that all but for me to do whatever little i have done i am to go through whatever i had to go through was was very very tough and uh, i'm really happy that I've, everything was a learning so now as i said no getting into public life i would want people i want to make it easier for people especially sportsmen or even people who are studying well you know for them to for me to make their path easier in terms of their dreams yeah is what what i intend to do and hopefully you know hopefully it, it should happen yeah um one of the ways that i look at my own life slightly negative phases or moments is that it happened to me so that i can help people not fall into those negative lakes exactly. eventually i think you're looking at it in a yeah, similar yeah, way absolutely because all my life people have tried to pull me down not not let me be successful or not let me go up the ladder so i want to do the opposite i want every single guy coming out of you know, not only my state in the country to become better than what the previous generation has been yeah uh, yeah that is what that is how you improve as a state a nation you want you want your next generation to be even more successful this whole journey you had from being troubled in the hyderabad cricket association till becoming a player for india becoming streets won't forget ambati raidu all that my question to you is what me gave you that success like if you could boil it down to a few things i think and what gave me that was it was always my father's dream for his son to play for india it was he dedicated his entire life for me he has not done anything else other than making me play cricket waking up in the morning taking me to training using up all his salary on me for everything so he has not lived his life so it would have been a great disservice on my part if i would have given up at any stage other than play for the country so i think end of the day now for his life he he is satisfied that is he has seen his son because he wanted to play the sport but back then in andhra and all that there were no facilities nothing they he could not so it's it's his dream and eventually it has become my dream but it is entirely his dream so i'm i'm very happy that i could do it for him yeah. yeah um what did you do on a personal level to enable the dream but oh my god i i did a lot after the icl we i mean i've i've not used a phone for 9 years huh yeah a mobile phone <laughs> there was no way people could get in touch because i wanted to be in that kind of not you wouldn't say focus but i just wanted to be in that zone without any distractions i was with baroda you know i played a lot of cricket with baroda for baroda cricket association so during that time you know my only goal was to make it to the indian side so i did a lot of sacrifices i used to be to develop patience <laughs> you know I used to do so many so many things in terms of if i didn't like something you know i used to react fast at an early age so i gotten into you know a lot of exercises where i used to do a thing i used to do a lot of things that i did not like but you know just to get used to getting out of comfort zone and all that like meditation and all not not really meditation but uh, things like uh, if i liked some food or something you mm. know you would give up on that you would give up on movies you would give up on something you would on a lot of things just to you know make sure that every single thing you are doing is towards your goal like you were all living breathing cricket yeah for about 
Eight nine years. Damn, dude. And you sacrificed all this other stuff yeah, in the process. Yeah, everything. Okay. How was your mental health in this whole phase? You were well, it was just good. I was happy. I was very happy. Blind purpose and dedication. Yeah, 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 yeah. completely. This is why I love sports podcasts so much because this is the kind of mentality that has to go out to India. People all over the world are going to watch this, but young India needs to know know that this is what it takes yeah. to be an international athlete. No, I mean, see, in my story, in my case, it took that much, but a lot of people, it might be easier as well. So they need not think that they have to do everything <laughs> on these lines to be successful. But no, 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 definitely they can, you know, they can have easier environments. Yeah. Like young cricket prodigies who come up, you know, get very early success and then like slip off. They are getting distracted. You feel nowadays it's very easy to get distracted, but it's very easy to come back as well now. But previously it was not the case. But now I think it's easy to get distracted because you have a cell phone. You think you know. You think you know the world. You think you are focused. But uh, I think. A lot of times, even Virat Kohli says it's all about visualization. Mm. But with this mobile phone around in your hand, how can you visualize for so long? Because everything is about you getting disturbed. So sport is a lot about uh, visualization, you know, dreaming. So I think uh, I don't know. I think uh, I'm sure a lot of young boys who are now coming up and being successful, they do it in their own way. Got it. Like the times have changed, and therefore yeah. the sport also has changed a little bit. Yeah, yeah, sport also has changed. Okay, like with the young boys, one of the common narratives is these guys are fearless and they'll just hit it out. No, without... they are fearless because uh, it's because of the wickets being so flat now. Because even, batting wickets. Yeah, most of them are batting wickets. So what is there to fear about? Other than Narendra Modi Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> God knows who has prepared that wicket. <laughs> 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 oh my god for a world cup finals <laughs> anyway bro you know matlab sometimes if i've had a bad breakup in life then <laughs> i will think about my breakup first thing in the morning last two days i've thought about losing the match <laughs> that's my first thought in the morning <laughs> we lost on sunday yeah, yeah no i mean even even yesterday i went to a place called dindalur i met a lot of engineering students we were all You know, interacting, going for a walk. Everybody's energy was low. साथ में रो रहे हैं सब. क्या हो गया? पूरा. I think it's everywhere. It's okay. Yeah. I think there's not. There isn't anger. No, there's, there's just... no anger. There's no anger. It's just that in a shock. Like, how did this happen? Yeah. There's shock. Shock. Yeah. I think this is my most painful cricket memory. Yeah. More than 2003. Yeah. yeah. 2003 Australia was a much better side, stronger side. This we were ten times the better side. I would say. So Travis said, "Look, ne tantra mantra kiya." I it just doesn't make sense to me. Kuch tantra mantra. Yeah, seriously, oh wicket jo banaye unko puchna. And generally, Motera is always a very good Motera. Now it's Narendra Modi Stadium. Is has always been a very very good good track. It's never been this low. I have played quite a few matches there. It's never been this low. Have you played in this stadium? But yeah, yeah, yeah this stadium, the big one. Yeah, the big. How one. does it feel playing in such a big stadium? It's good in a way because people are somewhere. Far. <laughs> yeah, they're so far away. Something I was wondering is, could that crowd have been a factor of pressure for the Indian side? No, oh, I don't think so. No, no, because this stadium is so spread out. I don't think. Uh, The acoustics of it are so intimidating. <laughs> no, the old Eden was old Eden Garden. Yeah. Now even uh, the Mumbai Stadium, it's so good to play because you can feel the crowd over you. As in, it's intense. Not intense, but it is nice because you you always feel that crowd are a part of the game. But this stadium, I think, it's very very spread out. Got it. Too big, too big, but it's not close. It is too too spread out. Like it spreads over a large, yeah, large area, um, and yeah, I don't think even I don't know viewing is that great. I'm not too sure because it feels that way. Okay, um, how does it feel playing at the Wankhede? Wankhede is unbelievable. Wankhede. Can you can you tell something about the crowd if it's a packed stadium? 
can you gauge the crowd's mentality in different cities yeah of course i like, mean it depends on the stadium and the way it is built i mean the acoustics mumbai feels vankade feels like the crowd are on top of you it's very close and chennai is slightly spread out but there are gaps between the stadium so a lot of the noise dissipates but uh, eden eden is good i think bangalore now is quite loud even though the capacity is not great but it's loud you enjoyed playing at bangalore yeah we enjoyed beating rcb many times <laughs> but, <laughs> but really enjoyed playing at uh, vankade yeah vankade is a great stadium all time favorite i think so yeah all time i remember watching so many mumbai indians games where you were there and our mentality as people in the crowd was be the 12th man be the 12th man always yeah. that's how mumbai indians fans think at least i'm sure even csk fans think the same yeah yeah csk fans are a little louder i would say yeah, yeah. little more passionate much more passionate yeah, yeah. mumbai indians fans are <laughs> professionals <laughs> come on go on match now ghar ja ke paise banao just joking but <laughs> <laughs> this hurts so much <laughs> no 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 i think i think mumbai fans are great what can you tell about mumbai fans like in I as a player as a player i would say they support mumbai indians more than one player or ex player or y player True. they are always for mumbai indians chennai is slightly different chennai are dhoni's fans first and then chennai csk if my boys not there i don't think uh, the stadium would be half full <laughs> they are all my boys fans did you ever talk to uh, my boy about bole jo ko yaar you know this no so whenever he <laughs> comes out to bat now they play a theme song like have you ever seen wwe you know they play a song when the wrestlers yeah, come yeah. so now when dhoni wise coming to bat they play bole jo ko yaar because there was a video of him that got leaked where he's like dancing on bole jo ko yaar no i haven't never seen. had this conversation no no okay no he is is quite a senior so we have that kind of respect for him we don't we don't joke there's, that much. there's no 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 there is good camaraderie but you know somehow you give him that kind of respect he has non cricket conversations yeah most of them are non cricket conversations like what do you talk about it's generally farm farming food bikes so anything anything in the world but the cricket conversations are very short crisp you know this is what uh, you know if he feels this is what needs to be done or adjusted you no know, he would he would just say it in a sentence and if if i have something to ask he would he would, he would always be receptive and guide us in a proper way do you guys carry cricket conversations back to the hotels if it is necessary like like if in a game something could have been done i mean in terms of my own game something could have been done i go and ask him or if he feels something i could have done he would call me and talk to me that's it i don't think we have generalized conversations i don't think anybody else like i'm assuming when you're on tour when you're in another country what is the dynamic so you'll play a game or you'll train then you'll come back to the hotel then are there little groups of guys who stick together and go out together generally there are always a group of friends who would go out but it does not necessarily mean that you know they are one gang or nothing like that everybody is goes out with everybody yeah it's a chilled atmosphere but there are no cricket conversations i'm assuming you'll switch off in yeah generally there on because once you get to a stage you don't want to confuse the other guy or the other guy doesn't want to confuse your mindset so it's generally there are not many cricket conversations but there'll always be generalized conversations okay yeah. uh is there ever a moment where you're having dinner and then someone will randomly say ambati by the way that reverse sweep like or something no, like no, nothing no, no, like no, that no, no, no one will no, no, ever bring it up okay. <laughs> maybe you yeah, know there'll be there'll be like fun conversation like if i would have done something stupid on the ground they would bring that up mm. or if somebody would have done something funny mm. that kind of a thing but it's never uh, serious stuff huh? one of the mo- funniest people who i look forward to from hearing from in terms of commentary or in generally interviews or whatever is bhaji pa like i think he's too funny yeah. is he as funny in person yeah he's always been i mean he has his moods and zones but uh, whenever uh, he's in a good mood i think he'll make everybody laugh he had one interview show also it was something with an antivirus brand i can't remember yeah. but it was a very funny no, interview even show. i was he, he did he did an episode with me as well. yeah very he's a very he seems like a very funny guy 
Like, uh, I remember even in the final, Salman Khan and Katrina Kaif were there for the pre-match interview. And Katrina Kaif told Mohamed Kaif that you are big and he looks at Mohamed Kaif like, wow, Mohamed Kaif. <laughs> like, he's like us. <laughs> no, no, most of the cricketers are very, very funny. I mean, they're all, because after a hard fought game or whatever, you need to, even if you lose, how do you come back from it? to go on to play another game in two days if you're not actually right in the head like funny in the head mm. you, you can't take yourself too seriously all the time and bakshodi is necessary yeah it's necessary and is also you know you should if you lose you need to find ways to joke about it you know have fun with it and go on go on to you know be mentally happy into the next game you cannot carry it and take yourself that seriously you can't This is sport. End of the day, you can't take yourself that seriously. Also, who is the biggest bakchod? I don't know, but I think most of them. <laughs> <laughs> but especially Hyderabadis and you, you and people from UP. Both the states are very, very famous. A lot of shit talking, oh random talking. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Both the states, right from our junior cricket, we are the <laughs> we are the funniest, and we are really good. we play we play really good cricket but it's fun to be around these two teams yeah. who was your most fun indian cricket team teammate who got the most Everybody. fun with any yeah. anyone who's make you laugh like really hard <laughs> a lot of people it's not like that but i'm very close to raina robin but uh, a lot of lot of lot of okay <laughs> how's raina bhai as a teammate no oh, he's superb is very positive is it's a great cricketer right brotherhood vibe yeah right? yeah brotherhood most of the cricketers are like that mm. i think few have it even more raina bhai is one of them you know he used to come and celebrate with every bowler yeah like that's what fans remember he was the first indian cricketer i had on the show oh, and okay. took time to break ice with him but by the end he's like laughing and chilling and i'm like okay this is a very happy friendly human yeah. being So that's the beauty of cricket. You see real people's characters, you know, on the field. Uh, I want to bring up one more thing. This is again fan question. Okay, streets won't forget question. It's about that whole that bhaji pa and you ka thing, which I'm sure you answered a lot. <laughs> But and now I think you answered it on that show also, that antivirus show a little bit. <laughs> But uh, it was very like. I I I don't want to use the word cool, but memorable watching it as a Mumbai Indians fan. Uh, but what I assume is Bhaji Pa is just very very passionate about cricket. Yeah, he is. Uh, I mean, he is fantastic cricketer as you yeah. know. No, I mean that incident was nothing. I mean, it had actually the previous over somebody else was standing at that position. He apparently made him stand somewhere else. The next over, I had I was put in there, so I stood at proper mid wicket position where I had to normally stand. So there was a four, as you know, and he got upset. He was shouting at me. I was like, I didn't understand why he was shouting at me. Mm. So I was like, What the hell is happening? Why are you shouting at me, types? Mm. So then he said, I asked you to stand. Then I told him, I'm. It was not me. Then he understood mm. the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, and then calm down. Yeah, yeah, it's. because he is also very very passionate and aggressive on the ground that is what has made him into such a stalwart in the sport so apparently everybody were emotional everybody has their aggression on the ground so it happened that day but there's nothing after that we are, we are still very very good with each other yeah you all have joked about it a lot <laughs> but you know when it was happening two things came to my head The first thing was, uh, wow! Even Ambati Raidu has that whole aggressive side. Cool, nice. Because that time you were very quiet. That was your impression. After we saw them, we were like, hey, nice, cool, aggressive side. <laughs> the second thing that came to my head is, thank God there were no slaps exchanged. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> no, but uh, it's all it's all memorable. Yeah, you know, these yeah. are happiest moments as cricket fans. Sorry, that's at your cost a little bit. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> it was a tension oriented yeah, moment, yeah. but it's memorable for fans. uh how often do you get asked about this these questions yeah every time i mean people remember all this they don't remember all the good stuff they'll only remember all this people want masala yeah in their life <laughs> uh but 
I'm trying to like people are becoming uh, yeah people are becoming more nerdy about cricket like they they see it from a little smarter so maybe maybe your viewers are becoming nerdy but in general they are so ignorant do you follow cricket memes not really people keep sending me stuff but after a while i've stopped watching them <laughs> oh okay. some of them are very mean but yeah, some but of them are funny i mean see as a sportsman that's the best part sportsmen are sportsmen Yeah. you you take it sportively hmm. you laugh about it if somebody criticizes you or says some random stuff you look at it and laugh about it yeah. hey, that's that's what being a sportsman is you know fair uh what's your favorite team india memory of all like personally what you'll tell your own grandkids about great team india memory I mean, grandkids definitely about my debut. That's very very special for any sportsman, you know, playing for the country. How did it feel putting on this uh, color? And that's why I said the whole journey, what all I had to go through, made it very very sweet. Because I had to actually become a totally different person to play for India in terms of my mindset or what I was. so my learnings in life everything started reflecting and it was a very very happy moment did you cry maybe i did <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah i think i had tears yeah well deserved tears yeah, of course yeah are there moments like that in your career where either the pain or the happiness is so much where tears come out yeah, yeah of course there have been so many moments as a sportsman your emotional rights are quite dramatic because some days you feel like you want to bang your head into a wall and some days you feel like you're on top of the world at that moment and the same sport and it can happen it can happen in two consecutive days so that's the beauty of sport does so, that process change you as a person of course so the process actually teaches you stuff that you can't you can't take life too seriously you just need to be in a constant zone because there'll always be ups and downs even if you like it or not people try to avoid all that but it's bound to happen it's just how you have you come out of all yeah. and how you have you still be humble and be constant in your mind when you're on top so that is what sport teaches you how have you maintained that humility i don't know i think it's it's my upbringing my parents my friends roots where when you go back they don't treat you as a cricketer when you go back home your friends treat you as any other guy like that's the best part so you i personally i don't want to be treated like i'm so, something yeah i'm a cricketer see cricketers yes sportsmen go through a lot in life to play for the country or whatever they do a lot of hard work that does not i personally feel that that does not give you any entitled entitlement to be above someone else you still you know a part of a larger society you can always share your experiences you can always help people with whatever little resources that you have but does not mean that you you know you become the king of the land no yeah. Yeah. You, you still need to be in the society you still need to help people you still need to remember your roots you still need to remember all the people who have helped you come up in life because i don't think any single sportsman or anybody would have come up in life on their own there will always be so many people at so many junctures who, who would have helped them so oh, i think everybody should be mindful of that is it fair to say that just the journey of sports eventually humbles everyone absolutely and no matter who you are it make you humble in the end yeah and especially a you know a great game like cricket it's not an individual sport it's a team sport there's so many variables so you need to i mean cricket teaches you everything That's it. That's, <laughs> That's the it. podcast for today, Amrithi <laughs> Raidu. Thank you. Thanks. This was so much fun talking to you. Like I hope it was fun for you as well. Yeah. Speaking yeah. with us. Uh, there's a lot of things you've spoken about that people wanted to know. Uh, 
वॉट एवर आई विश टू से टू यू एट दी एंड पार्ट ऑफ इट ऑलरेडी सेट टू यू बट जस्ट नो दैट इंडियन फैंस आर नॉट गोइंग टू फर्गेट वॉट यू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड टू द गेम एंड इन योर आईज इन मेनी वेज इट वॉज अबाउट योर डैड्स ड्रीम एंड देन विच बिकेम योर ड्रीम एंड यू प्लेइंग फॉर आर कंट्री सो थैंक यू फॉर अचीविंग योर डैड्स ड्रीम एंड योर ड्रीम बट फॉर अस स्पेसिफिकली सी एस के फैंस एम आई फैंस यू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड अलॉट बट वी हैव इन फॉर वट यू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड फॉर टीम इंडिया ऑल्सो सो यू आर टोटली अर स्ट्रीट्स वॉन्ट फॉर गेट क्रिएटर एंड आई एम ग्लैड की through our show uh, you know another side of you got revealed to the audiences so <laughs> thank you bye thank you thank you Lots so much love. thank Having, you thank you that was the episode for today i'd love to know what you guys the core nerd cricket fans just like myself thought about this particular episode you guys are the audience that i'm always trying to address with these episodes though my earlier mentality with the podcast used to be about general conversation i think i'm going to shift it in the long term to go very deep into niche segments because we release so many episodes so please tell me what you thought about this particular episode what else would you have had me ask him and who else would you like to see from the cricket world speak up on TRS i like doing things very differently than traditional broadcasters because i feel like carry fan questions with me to so help me improve these cricket podcasts and until next time from ranveer and the team we'll see you soon